Hello everyone, it's Mikey, your favorite genderqueer unicorn, and welcome back to my bed! For those of you who are new here, hi! And for those of you from Bag Chat, hi again! My name is Mikey and I love bags, as you can tell from here and from here. So if you like videos about bags and fashion and just life in general, please subscribe and join our Fem Power family and hit that thumb button because it really does help with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. Ever since this pandemic has happened, it's just given me a lot of time to look in my closet and appreciate what I already have and a lot of the stuff that I already love and own. One of the bags that stood out the most for me was this. Kurt Geiger Rainbow Kensington in the size medium. I have never, ever fallen in love with a bag so hard than this. When I saw first, when I first saw it on Instagram, it was just love at first sight. I was like, this rainbow, this metallic color, just everything about it. I just loved it so much, and I knew I had to get it. And I was so obsessed. I was searching for it high and low. I actually had to get my sister, who was living in London at the time, to buy this, and I had no idea when I was going to meet her, but I just knew that I needed to have it. Despite my handbag addiction and having so many other bags, this is probably one of my favorites because it just brings me so much joy every time I look at it and every time I wear it. I just feel so special because it's just so beautiful and I can't get enough of it. And did I mention how much it was? It's only $265. The price is crazy for such a good quality bag. And since I've had this bag for over two years now, I feel like I've got a little bit of knowledge when it comes to the pros and cons and wear and tear and all that stuff about this bag. Because there are so many reviews out there that talk about how great this bag looks and everything brand new. But there, are no, there aren't really any updated reviews about long-term wear and tear and all that about this bag. And that's what I'm here to talk to you guys about today. And honestly, at $265, I think this is one of the best bags that you can get today that's under $300. Like, dare I say this might be the best, number one best bag that you can get under $300? Let's find out in this video, shall we? First, let's talk about the stats of this bag. This bag is a full leather bag. It's in a metallic pebbled leather. It's got a double chain strap, which you can wear single or double. It's got this beautiful bird metallic and rhinestone head in front. And it's also opened with a double magnetic closure. You could also see from the inside that there is two spots that you can put your stuff in, one in the back and one in the front. The bag retails for $265 and I think it's the bag that put Kurt Geiger on the map. Well, it's the bag that put Kurt Geiger on the map, for me anyway. I've had this bag for over two years now and I think it still looks so amazing for its age especially considering what I have put this bag through. I've traveled with it. I put it in my luggage while it's overstuffed, so it's not squashed while in the luggage, but it still looks great. I put a lot of things in it. I, honestly, I put this bag through the ringer and I'm amazed that it still looks this good. You may remember from my previous video that I unboxed a bag that looks almost just like this bag. I have it right over there. It's the pastel version of this bag and it is brand new and basically the same version of this bag. And we will be going through the differences and similarity, similarities between the old and new ones, but also how the wear and tear is because this is over two years old now and that I just got like last week. So this really truly gives us a true look at what, a wear, what the wear and tear would look like on this bag after two years of use and abuse. So without further ado, 
Let's get started, shall we? We're going to start this in-depth review by going through some of the pros and cons of this bag that I have found by using it for the past two over years. I have my little phone here for my notes of my pros and cons, so if I look at it, please do not be offended. I'm just referring to my notes. One of the biggest pros of this bag, in my opinion, is the price point. Like I said, this is $265. This one does not go on sale ever. I've been waiting for a long time. I did get my pastel rainbow one on sale and a lot of the other styles go on sale too. So if a sale is what you're after, you can definitely get a sale for these for about $110 to $150 depending on the sale. Seriously, you cannot beat the price point of this bag. I would say that the Kurt Geiger Kensington is the best bag that you can buy under $300 because it is such good quality. Speaking of quality, let's talk about the leather quality of these bags, shall we? So, as I said, told you earlier, this bag is in a metallic leather. It's a metallic pebbled leather. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And honestly, the color is what got me to buy this in the first place. And I don't know, I just feel like the leather is so... The leather feels so much more expensive and luxurious than the price range that it's in. Yeah, it still smells so good after over two years. And I'm gonna show you just what I mean when I say that this is so much more luxurious than the price that you pay for it. Leather on this Kurt Geiger bag is kind of super similar to the leather on my metallic silver Sac de Jour Saint Laurent bag, which, let me bring it over here to show you guys. Come on here. This is my silver Saint Laurent Sac de Jour bag. I got it. I want to say at the end of 2017 for as a Christmas present and I just think it's so so beautiful this was my first ever Saint Laurent bag and it's what turned me on to Saint Laurent but let me show you this bag close up as you can see it is a metallic silver pebbled leather and it kind of even looks similar to the metallic pebbled leather on the Kurt Geiger bag and when I bring you guys in, in for a close-up, you're gonna see the different, the similarities of the leathers. And like, honestly, look, it seriously looks so similar. It's crazy. And this is 10 times less than this bag. Another advantage for specifically having a rainbow bag is that rainbow literally goes with everything. Why, I wonder? Because it literally has every color that you might have in your wardrobe. Like, this might not have a red red, but it still goes. And there's like this purpley that goes. And like, honestly, can't go wrong. Matches everything in your wardrobe. And if you're looking for something more classic, they have styles that are in lambskin and one color. It's still quilted and still really beautiful. It really does kind of give like the Saint Laurent Lulu vibes and also a little bit of Chanel vibes, but less that. It's a little more casual looking, but it's still a great quality bag at an amazing price. And honestly, Flat bags are so stylish. They are my personal favorite style, and I think they just go with everything. And it's classic. Chanel cemented that back in, like, I don't know, a very long time ago. Someone tell me. But I think it's so good. Another amazing pro for this bag is the durable pebbled leather. Because the leather is pebbled, it's very resistant to scratches and the outside elements. And because it's a treated colored leather, that makes it very uh, water resistant and also very durable. I've brought this to the beach. I've brought this to the beach clubs. I've brought this to the clubs. I've literally brought this everywhere. Festivals, pride, definitely pride because it's rainbow. 
but yeah, it's very resistant and it's gonna last a very long time. Like I said, this bag is kind of similar to the St. Laurent Lulu. Maybe not in the size that I have. This one is the St. Laurent Lulu in the size medium. And of course this is bigger. I think the size small would be a little more comparable to this, but as you can tell, they have very similar silhouettes. They both have magnetic closures and flaps and quilts. And honestly, this for 10 times less than this, I think it's very worth it. And the Kurt Geiger bag can go single strap or double strap so you can wear it any way you want. And it's also a very versatile bag that you can dress up or down. You can wear this with jeans and a t-shirt and wear this to the beach as a casual outfit vibe. Or you can just, you can all, or, or you can also dress this up and bring it to dinners, events, and special occasions. So really it's such a versatile bag. Last but not least, my favorite part of all of the Kurt Geiger Kensington bag is the fact that you can buy it on sale and sometimes at such an amazing, amazing discount. So this bag typically retails for $265 at Nordstrom, but recently during their sale, I got this beautiful pastel version of this bag, which we're going to compare to this one later for wear and tear. I got this one for a little over $110, 55% off the original price. And honestly, really, for $110 plus tax, this is like unbeatable. Seriously, you cannot beat this price. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to some of the cons of this bag, which in the grand scheme of things, I don't think are that big of a deal, especially considering the price point of this bag. So let's go. The first things that I noticed about this bag was the amazing leather quality, right? Like we talked about before, it's in the beautiful pebbled metallic leather. But the second thing I noticed about this bag when I got it was the fact that the chain honestly felt kind of super cheap not super cheap but it just did not feel the same as like a chanel chain or a saint laurent chain it feels lighter at first i thought it was plastic because it was so light but it is in fact metal because when it's cold out and you put it against your skin it is cold so my theory is that this is like a hollow metal the inside of the links are hollow, which is why it is so light. But that could also be seen as a pro because that makes it lighter. A full metal chain, like on the Chanel Jumbo, for example, gets really, really heavy, especially with the leather intertwined. So this might be a pro for some people, but it is a con for me personally. However, I do notice that on the newer version of this bag, the chain sounds different and it feels a little more substantial than the older one that I got over two years ago. The biggest gripe that I have with this bag is this damn flap. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If it's not on your shoulder or on you as a crossbody, the flap opens up very easily, right? Look at that. Let's see if you can catch that. So easy! But... Oops. The minute it's on your shoulder, like so, trying to get into it, it's pretty annoying, right? And when you have stuff in there, it's even worse. The worst part about opening this bag is when you have a crossbody. Okay, so now that, so that you guys are in frame, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. It's a little high for me, crossbody, and it's a little kind of big, boxy, and bulky crossbody. And 
The worst part about this, like I was saying earlier, is trying to open this crossbody. Do you see the problem? With it crossbody, you can't barely open the flap and it's a little hard to reach inside. And when you're doing that, I don't know if you guys can see, but as you're doing something like that, it bends the flap on the top and on the inside. It's just really annoying to get in and out of as a crossbody. A lot of times when I'm carrying a crossbody and I want to open it, I have to lift it up from the bottom to be able to open it like that and then reach in. If not, sometimes it opens up like this and honestly, sometimes I just pull on it like that, get my stuff out, drop it. Because you know what? It's such a great price point. I honestly don't really baby it that often and yeah, I'm not that worried for it. But yes, this can get really, really frustrating. Following on that topic though, this back part of the bag, this back section is so hard to get to sometimes. As, like I said, trying to open it, this flap stays closed and it's hard to get to the front so it's even harder to get to the back. And even when you have it open like that, the way that the chains are interlocked and woven through the center divider make it so that this top part pinches in and closes when you're like pulling the flap open so makes it even harder again to take anything from that but i guess a potential upside to that is the fact that it'll be hard for anyone to steal anything from out of your bag while it's on you so there's that having said all of those cons all the cons that i have for this bag are actually the same cons that I have for the St. Laurent Medium Lulu over here. Like I said earlier, these two bags are very similar and they have very similar cons because this also has the double chain, which makes it very difficult to get into it sometimes. Oh, actually, yeah, there you go. It makes it a little difficult to get into it sometimes. And especially as a single strap bag it's almost impossible again to get into the back it does have less of an issue with the pinching on the top with closing the back section of the bag but ultimately it does have all the same cons as this kurt geiger kensington bag but you know what the kurt geiger kensington bag is also almost more than 10 times less than the St. Laurent Medium Lulu bag. They share a lot of the same pros too, like we talked about in the leather quality of the bags. Like, I think everyone is sleeping on this bag. Don't you? Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Kurt Geiger bag. Do you think it's high quality or am I just talking out of my butt here? I feel like I'm not though. I feel like I know a thing or two about quality, so yeah. Now let's talk about the wear and tear. I've had this bag for over two years, like I said earlier, and I have traveled with it. It's been caught in the rain. I brought it to the beach. I've stuffed it in my super full luggage. Like everything that you shouldn't do to a bag, I have done to this bag. And Honestly, it still looks so good. Like for what I have put it through, I did not baby this bag at all. And I have literally put this bag through the ringer. So I think it still looks really good. This bag right here is the brand new version of this bag. Can you tell a difference? Do you see anything? We're gonna talk about it right now. One of the biggest worries that I had about this bag when I first got it was its metallic color. Because it was such a cheap price, I thought that it might just be like a coating that on top of the leather that might just fade and wear off over time. But as you can tell, after two years of abuse, this baby still looks so beautiful. And honestly, I don't really see that many marks on there because even though I've 
banged it around a lot. I see a bit of a spot here and I see a couple spots here, but that looks like something that is spilled onto it or got dirty on it. And really the main difference that I personally see between these two is the stitching between the leather panels on the older bag is a little looser over here, as you can tell, like in between. And it's a lot tighter on the new bag, which is to be expected because this has been used a lot and this is brand new. It does look like it lost a little bit of structure, but I would say that the main difference is the leather in front has kind of stretched out from all the stuff that I put in it. Whereas leather in the front of this is still nice and even and straight as you can see from there. I think that's just part and parcel of breaking in a bag, right? And after two years, this does have a little bit of puffy sagginess in front, but it's really not that bad, like considering what I've done to it. So what do you guys think? And that you can tell that this bag is brand new because the leather is nice and tight and the stitching between the quilts are still super tight and you can't see it. This is the two-year-old one and even though it's two years old and it's got a couple of specks of dirt and it's a little stretched out and you can kind of see the stitching between the quilts in certain angles. It still looks really good. Like, I would say so far the wear and tear is amazing, even though this bag has been put through the ringer. Now we're gonna do a what fits into this Kurt Geiger bag. And right here what I have are some things that I personally carry with me when I travel. And let's see what fits, shall we? I remember traveling with this camera inside this bag very specifically. And I was so surprised because it fit so well in there. Do you see that? It fits so perfectly. This is the Sony A6500 and it's got a small pancake 16 millimeter lens. And that's usually the lens I carry around with me when I travel. It's great for landscapes and just general scenery. And then next off, we might put a phone, right? This doesn't fit standing up this way because it won't close. So we'll have to put it sideways. Let's put it in the back, shall we? And then depending which, depending which country, either or, let's say we're gonna use the zippy for now. Put it in the back. Nope, we'll put it up front here with the camera. Okay, ta-da. See where my other phone can fit? Let's put it with my phone. Let's put, let's put it the other way. There. I have this really annoying case on there. Right? Let's see. Let's put keys inside. Right? Still fit a lippy for sure. And this is headphones. Ooh, this is tough. Maybe not the headphones. I think so. Okay, there you go. As you can tell, everything fits in there. It's a little bulgy, which is probably where I got the stretching of my leather from. 
but it doesn't feel like the bag is going to break. It feels very sturdy, and I feel very confident that this bag can hold all my items. Now, let's take everything out. is really one of the best bags, if not the best bag that you can get under $300. Like, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. I personally think that this bag is beautiful and it's a bag that's going to be in my collection forever and it's a bag that I'll forever love and cherish and will forever bring me joy when I see it. And in my opinion, you really cannot beat Kurt Geiger for the price. And in my opinion, you really can't beat Kurt Geiger for the price and the quality that you get under $300. It's so insane to me. Like, obviously I like it as you can tell by these little cuties over here, but I suggest you go out and get yourself your own Kurt Geiger Kensington bag. No matter what the leather or color or anything is, I know that you're going to love your Kurt Geiger bag. I hope y'all liked this video. I hope you found it interesting. And I hope that I helped you make a decision on perhaps buying this bag. Because honestly doesn't get any prettier than this. If you liked this video, I would love it if you subscribed and joined our Fem Power family and hit that bell notification icon so you get notified whenever I create a new video. I know you want to do it. Go on. Press that button. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys and I hope to see you guys in the next one.